Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code 1FREEPP for a free single card today. Hi hey everyone, David Aragona here with another edition of the Timeform US Road to the Derby series. The future race on Saturday at Gulfstream Park, race 14 on their Marathon 14 race card is the Grade 1 Florida Derby going a mile and an eighth for the three-year-olds. 100 Kentucky Derby qualifying points on offer to the winner of this race. So the winner and likely the second place finisher will be guaranteed spots in that Kentucky Derby starting gate. We've got a field of 11 three-year-olds signed on to contest this grade one affair in Hallandale Beach, Florida on Saturday. And we've got three horses that are likely to attract the most support from the public. Those are the number two Hades, the winner of the Holy Bull, the number nine Conquest Warrior coming in off an impressive allowance victory and of course last year's two-year-old champion the number 10 fierceness who is installed as the eight to five morning line favorite looking to get back on track after a surprising loss in the holy bull in his three-year-old debut coming back for the second start of his sophomore campaign looking to right the ship but we've got eight others in this field all likely to be big prices some horses that do have upside and we're going to go through all of them before we do that though let's take a look at the time form us pace projector for this florida derby field and it does appear that there is some speed signed on. Horses like the number six, Ladon Bro, the number eight, Seminole Chief, have done their best running when forwardly placed. Even Hades uh, scored a gate-to-wire victory in the Holy Bull last time, but the number 10, Fierceness, if he is ridden aggressively in this race, he is simply faster in the early stages than everybody else in this field, and he is supposed to be able to make the front end, barring some unforeseen trouble at the start like he did encounter in the Holy Bull last time. If he gets away cleanly, you've got to think that John Velasquez is going to be gunning him to the front end from his outside post position and try to lead this field the entire way. We'll see if he can do it going this mile and an eighth distance. If the pace does heat up quite a bit, a horse who has the best time for U.S. late pace rating in the field indicated by that LP flag on the pace projector is one of Fierceness's main rivals, the number nine, Conquest Warrior. I don't think anybody's worried about him getting the distance coming off a mile and eighth victory. He'll be finishing late. We'll just see if he can do so in fast enough time to catch some of those ahead of him. Let's go through this field in post position order, beginning with one of those bigger prices, the number one Frankie's Empire. This horse was coming out of the Fountain of Youth last time, the local prep for this, where he finished third, but that Fountain of Youth field had been significantly reduced by scratches. It became a much easier race, dominated by the odds on Doorknock, and the two horses that finished behind Doorknock, I don't think would necessarily be considered horses likely to be in the trifecta in other tougher derby preps. I think they just found the right situation in that Fountain of Youth last time, and you've also got some major distance questions to answer for a horse like Frankie's Empire, who scored a victory sprinting two back in the swale stakes going seven furlongs was impressive that day though did so with a pretty good trip sitting off multiple horses dueling ahead of him and then last time he was under a hard ride most of the way settled for third in that fountain of youth but would likely have to do better than that to beat a field like this going the longest distance that he has ever uh, competed at in this florida derby the number two is Hades, and we'll take a look at his most recent upset victory in that Holy Bull where he did beat Fierceness, who will tackle again on Saturday. Now, I think the general narrative around this victory in the Holy Bull was that Hades had everything go his way, and he did, breaking from the inside post. He's a horse that has tactical speed. Some others who wanted to show speed, like Fierceness, had a little bit of adversity heading into that clubhouse turn, and Hades was able to use his ground-saving position uh, to get to the front end through very slow to modern moderate fractions, you see those blue color-coded time form US pace figures for the Holy Bull, and that really enhanced uh, his ability to finish off the race towards the end. I still did like the way that Hades kicked away from that field once he changed over to his right lead in the stretch. We had seen the same thing from him two back when he was an impressive winner of a seven furlong allowance race against Florida Breads. As soon as he switched over to that right lead, he really powered away from that field to get a 111 time form US final time rating that day, proving that the Holy Bull speed figure that he got was no fluke. Hades had actually run just as fast, if not a little bit faster, in that allowance brace prior to that. And he did score the upset last time at 9-1. to one. You're likely going to have to take a shorter price if you back Hades in this Florida Derby. But he drew a better post position than his two main rivals, once again, going this mile and eighth distance. And I really like what I've seen from Hades' training coming into this race. Unlike some others, he's coming in off a bit of a layoff. And I really was impressed by that drill, especially on March 10th, where he uh, bested company 
company and was galloping out very strongly past the wire in fast time. Things seems like Hades is thriving coming into this race, and he might be able to prove that that holy bull score last time was no fluke. Number three is Bail Us Out. Let's take a look at his most recent victory when he broke his maiden uh, for Fierceness's connections. Mike Rapoli and Todd Pletcher are the owner and trainer of this horse, and he broke this maiden over uh, a synthetic surface at Gulfstream Park, so he's going to have to prove that he can be as effective on dirt. The feather in his cap is that he did seem to improve going a longer distance, stretching out to the mile in the 16th here. He obviously finished up this race well, so stamina does not appear to be a major concern for this son of looking at Lucky. He's just going to have to run faster. Only got a 97 time formula speed figure for that last race. I will say his debut on the dirt might be a better performance than the result indicates because he got studied at the start, was a little green that day, making up ground at the end before galloping out well. But this is still a big step up in class for this horse. And I don't think he's going to be that big of a price given the connections and the fact that he is going to be ridden by the leading rider, Irad Ortiz, in this race. The number four is Grand Mo the First. Let's take a look at his most recent start when he was narrowly beaten in a blanket finish in the Grade 3 Tampa Bay Derby just a few weeks ago, three weeks ago to be exact. Uh, this race, of course, a non-wagering affair due to those uh, unforeseen and uh, unfortunate circumstances with the tote delay that you see on the screen there. But uh, regardless of the inability to wager on this race, uh, Grand Mo the First ran very well uh, to be third behind some nice horses like Domestic Product and No More Time, her, who were the two favorites favorites in that affair. It was a very slow paced race. They really crawled up front, slowed down the pace to a ridiculous degree in the middle portions of the race. And Grandma the First was sprinting towards the wire like the others, actually making up some ground on a few horses, not finishing quite as fast as the winner of the race, Domestic Product, but still putting in a good effort to show that finishing speed going two turns after he had run one turn at his prior start going uh, seven furlongs on the dirt. He's only competed on this main track twice. Uh, the dirt course at Gulfstream been in Tampa last time, so maybe he's proving to be a little better on the dirt than he was on synthetic or turf, but still, he'd have to take a big step forward facing this tougher field than he met last time out in the Tampa Bay Derby. The number five is a real macho. He has another one coming out of that Fountain of Youth stakes that I've already talked about. Probably was not the strongest prep for this Florida Derby, and he finished behind a couple of horses that he'll be meeting again here in Ladon Bro and Frankie's Empire. Didn't think he had a big excuse that that day. Uh, the pace was towards the uh, moderate to slow end, uh, and he was raiding just off the leader door knock, but he still was unable to pick up any ground, actually fading behind those horses through the stretch. So Real Macho is just going to have to run a lot better than he did last time to be a factor in this Florida Derby. The number six is Le Dombro, another horse coming out of the Fountain of Youth, and we'll take a look at the stretch run of that race now. And He's no match for Doorknock. Doorknock is able to dominate this race on the front end and get the job done in workmanlike fashion like Doorknock often does, but Le Dombro did battle on the most gamely of any of those that finished behind him. He actually took a shot at Doorknock around the far turn and just ultimately settles for a second going this mile in the 16th distance, and the way that he faded at the end of this race after stalking a moderate pace, you do have to wonder if stretching out further to the mile and eighth distance is really going to suit this horse. He tried this distance once before as a two-year-old and was no match for Doorknock, really no match for the competition that he was facing in the Remsen, potentially not liking the muddy track that he encountered that day, but he did earn a solid 110 time from the speed figure last time. His form is heading in the right direction, just not sure that he is best suited to this nine furlong Florida Derby against the level of competition that he'll be tackling. The number seven is Catalytic. We'll take a look at his most recent start, going six furlongs in an allowance race at Tampa Bay Downs, and that is him just leaving the screen at the top of the stretch. He's got a lot of ground to make up by the time they get to the quarter pole in this race, and he's going to almost do it. He's going to come back into the screen in the very late stages, quickly making up ground on the eventual winner across the wire. This was a big late run for this horse, coming back off a layoff. He had made just one start as a two-year-old back at the beginning of October, needed some time after that. He was off for about five months before returning in that early March race at Tampa Bay Downs. And almost, um, you know, he actually did better his time from your speed figure up to a 98 that day, making that big late run. The problem with Catalytic is 
stretching out from a six furlong allowance race to now go nine furlongs against grade one company. That's a pretty tall order for a lightly race horse like this. He is going out for dangerous connections, Sappy Joseph. The fact that he's running in this race has to be taken as a good sign, uh, but still, it feels like a big ask for a horse like this that is so inexperienced to tackle a field of this quality. The number eight is Seminole Chief. He is coming off a of victory last time out over the Tapita surface at Gulfstream Park, and he appeared to appreciate getting back to Florida last time. Got away with some moderate fractions towards the front end. You see that first pace figure in Time Form US is color-coded blue. Also take note of the race rating box in that blue uh, oval but next to the race conditions in Time Form US. The red color coding indicates that it was a speed-favoring Tapita surface that day, so maybe Seminole Chief was very much with the race flow and the track on that occasion still learned his best time from a speed figure so far a 105 but now he's gonna have to try to do it on the dirt against much tougher competition that he faced in his prior dirt races in a field that possesses some other speed so it does feel like he's has his work cut out for him in this florida derby the number nine is Conquest Warrior. He's going to be one of the horses that attracts a lot of support in this race off these last two victories, one of which we're taking a look at here when he went the nine furlong distance uh, at Gulfstream Park against Allowance Competition. This was just a really good stepping stone race because he'd already gotten a good education when he broke his maiden two back going the mile distance at Gulfstream, had all sorts of trouble through the first half of that race, off to a slow start, squeezed back between runners, encountering traffic around the far turn and got the job done impressively after altering course and upper stretch to rally down the center of the course beating a very good field of maidens that has already produced a couple of next out winners with quality. And then last time out, he was probably facing an easier field, despite the fact that he was stepping up against winners for the first time. And as you saw in that replay, he just did what was required of him to get the job done, winning comfortably by five lengths, geared down towards the end. Now, he wasn't geared down in the way that I would expect a horse uh, to be able to run a lot faster than the 106 time from your speed figure that he did earn. Uh, he was ridden to about mid-stretch before Jose Ortiz just let him coast into the wire, but he does appear to be a horse that is on an upward trajectory. He's improving with each start, and he's going out for Shug McGee, who has a reputation as being a trainer that brings horses along slowly, gets them to make these incremental improvements over time, so it's reasonable to expect the Conquest Warrior can take another step forward in this race, but he is going to have to run faster, and just given how popular he's been on this march towards the Kentucky Derby, I don't think you're going to get that big of a price on this horse on Saturday. Number 10 is Fierceness, and we already looked at Fierceness in that Holy Bull replay, talking about Hades. He was disappointing that day. He did have trouble at the start, got badly sandwiched between runners coming out of the starting gate, and had to be used a little bit into that clubhouse turn to attain forward position. But keep in mind, they were moving pretty slowly up front. He only had to rush forward into some slow fractions, so it shouldn't have been that taxing on a horse that was as strong a favorite as he was, 1-5 to five coming into that race, and seemed like a legitimate one to five off that vic victory in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year, where he ran the fastest number of anybody in this crop, aside from Niso, out in California, getting that 122 time from your speed figure, beating the best in his division back in November of last year. And it's not like that came out of nowhere, because he had also shown himself to have high ability in that debut race at Saratoga. But the thing that we've seen from Fierceness is that when things don't go right at the start, he can really throw in the towel. We saw that from him in the Champagne when he had some minor trouble at the start lunged at the break, was out of position, did not show up that day. And then last time, the Holy Bull, similar trouble at the start, got into the race, but just lacked finish going that two-turn distance. I do think that there's a good chance that Fierceness can bounce back with a better effort in this race. As long as he breaks cleanly, he's likely to get a more aggressive ride. And racing out front of this field, he does seem like he's more apt to show his true ability. I, though, still question whether a two-turn nine furlongs is going to be what this horse wants to do. Watching him run and his development from two-year-old to three-year-old season, I just get the sense that maybe he hasn't really grown up. And I wonder if the nine furlongs is going to be his ideal distance moving forward. He might just be more of a sprint or miler type given that high cruising speed that he does possess but he is training well coming into this race and i do respect anybody who does think that he's going to be able to bounce back with a better effort this time out 
And then rounding out the field is the number 11, Iris's Dream, just biting off a lot in this race, uh, stepping up from an optional claiming maiden race last time to try grade one company and actually broke his maiden on the turf. I did think he looked really good winning that turf race. He was striding over that course like he appreciated getting on the grass for the first time, but was just beating vastly inferior competition. And while he did run a faster speed figure in his dirt race just prior to that, even that number against the quality field that he faced, that, that kind of performance is not going to make him competitive against the field that he's meeting on Saturday. So just feels like these connections are taking a shot at a big price against a pretty tough field in this great one, Florida Derby. Well, let's throw out my picks for this big race on Saturday at Gulfstream Park and I'm going to go with the number two Hades. I'm going to bank on that holy bull result not being a fluke. I really like the way he's training into this race, and I just think he's a horse that has run well in every single start of his career. He does not strike me as one that necessarily needs the lead in this race. I don't think he's going to get the lead, even though he's got a post position advantage on some of his main pace rivals in here, but I just think he's going to run well again, and I trust him a little bit more than the two that I've got in the second and third positions, the number nine Conquest Warrior, who just has to get faster, and the number 10 Fierceness, who's like to be the prohibited favorite in this race once again, but has to prove that he can bounce back going this nine for a long distance. So it's the number two Hades for me in the grade one Florida Derby on Saturday at Gulfstream. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.